Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Unshackled Waves, Episode 7. You're here with your Editors-in-Chief, uh, me, Tim Wilms, and, of course, Sukith Fernando. Hello, everyone. This is our Tuesday review show where we discuss the week's news and events and inform our listeners about the latest battles against the enemies of freedom. And, of course, uh, this week we're still dealing with the aftermath of the, the US presidential election and, of course, Donald Trump's uh, great victory last week. We are, and um, we are seeing lots of events happening right now um, around the United States, and it is pretty hectic, um, if I was to overstate it. But, you know, um, we hope... Well, we just want to talk about what's happening right now, but we hope things get things calm down um, soon because, you know, uh, they're just being crybabies, quite frankly, and nothing's going to change the results. So, but we will discuss the actual situation today. Yes, because there's been protests in, in major cities all around the United States pretty much every night since election night. There's, there's been uh, some rioting and a lot of burning of flags, uh, people demanding the election result be overturned. Uh, there's the hashtag, not my president. And of course, love Trump's hate. Yeah, um, that's, yeah, that's, um, that's quite funny, that love Trump's hate thing, because um, I didn't expect love Trump's hate had anything to do with assault and mass um, looting and, you know, all those violence. Um, so it's interesting. Yes, and uh, and of course, uh, the, these protests. There's uh, a lot of uh, rumors circulating around that they've been paid. A lot of them are being paid to go there. Yeah, yeah. Trump actually um said that in uh, in his interview on sixty minutes. He said that that there are some people who have been paid, and that's possible because we know that there were people paid um before the election to actually um wreak havoc in Trump rallies. So it's very possible that. Well, it's certain, I think, that there are people who are paid to do this. Yeah, and of course, we're seeing it uh, at uni uh, universities uh, all around uh, all around America uh, offering counselling if students are too traumatised by the results and exams uh, be uh, being deferred. Uh, I think we've we've spoken about this before, but we yeah, have yeah. just the the reaction uh, by the progressive left has just been like all that happened was you lost you lost, you lost an election which is bound to happen from time to time you're, you're carrying yeah. on like it's the end of the world yeah i mean um the thing is we did talk about it but it's just the the situation keeps on escalating i mean thousands of people lining up in i saw a video in los angeles for example people rallying up and protesting against trump people burning his effigies it's just escalating and the thing is um uh, it's quite frankly, I saw an article that said, um, you know, this is what, what Republicans might have felt um, if, when Obama won a second time, you know, well, we didn't actually feel so offended or triggered, but we were disappointed. And I think it's important that the Democrats, the Hillary supporters understand that, you know, that they, they, they are bound to lose an election one day. And so far, neither Obama or Hillary have told the protesters to go home. Yeah, that's very disappointing. I expect um, Obama to do something. I haven't even heard him say anything about it. I mean, these are mass protests. There are lootings. People are getting assaulted. Um, I saw a video of a woman getting assaulted by all these um, protesters. Um, and it's just, it's ironic. And I want the president to do something, the current president to do something, and he's not doing anything. Um, you know, it's it's almost like he supports those protests, which I think he does. Uh, the only one, uh, only uh, po uh, politician who's condemned it from the left side is uh, Bernie Sanders. He's told them all to uh, uh, quit and quit and go home. Yeah, I think that's a very responsible thing to say, um, because you know he's accepted it. He's accepted the results. Um, and I hope it works. I hope his sort of warning works. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy that Bernie said that. I mean, we did see Austin Peterson speak against the whole reaction, um, but I'm happy someone from the left actually says something. Um, yeah. 
And isn't it ironic that uh, Hillary and her supporters were saying, uh, "Whoever wins the election, they must uh, the the loser must uh, accept the result, and the country must must come together." Obviously, that only applied if Hillary won. <laughs> yeah, it only applies if Hillary Clinton won the election, not if Trump won. Um, and now that Trump won, it's a different. It's it's upside down now you know the left was saying something else previously but they're doing the exact opposite love trump's hate you know um peace and love etc all those hashtags and quotes they had about hillary but now it's all overturned and it's all hate and violence and as i said i didn't expect love trumping hate to have so much assault involved in it so it's interesting well, uh, one of their main arguments is that uh, even though Trump uh, decisively won the Electoral College, Hillary's still in front in the in the yeah. popular vote. Yeah, um, that's uh, they have. A, I think they have a point when you look at the numbers, but it's only six hundred thousand people. So I get. I mean, I get what they mean. I understand, but it's only six hundred thousand people extra that Hillary has. Um, and we have seen reports that actually three million, three million illegal migrants yes. voted. Um, so you know, and guess who they voted for? So um, I think if you remove the three million from Hillary, then she has what sixty million, sixty million nine hundred thousand right now. That means she probably has like fifty-seven million right now. Um, if those three million people did vote. So no, she's most likely, um, she's not even leading Trump most likely because if three million people voted, illegals voted for her, then, you know, come on. And the Electoral College, it's been around for 200 plus years. So it's, yeah. it's, it's worked extremely well, but all of a sudden now, because you didn't like the outcome of it, oh, it's got to go. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, the thing is, it doesn't matter if, in terms of the popular vote, one candidate gets it because that's not how we count it. The electoral, this system actually makes sure that there is no bias because if they counted the popular vote, um, then the actual results will be sort of skewed towards the metro urban areas. And this system makes sure that there's um, actually a bit more um, equality sort of in a, in a sense between the urban areas and rural areas. So. That's why this system is the fair way. It, I mean, I, we know that she has 600,000 extra supporters um, as in voters, but the thing is, it's, it, we just don't do that. You know, it's, the, it's unfair to just look at the popular, popular vote. That's why we have this system in place. Plus, we don't actually know if there was no electoral college what the popular vote would have been because there yeah. are safe blue states such as California and New York where probably a lot of Republicans didn't bother to vote because they knew that the state was just going to be a uh, Democrat anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, we've seen the map. Most swaths, like swaths of land in the US are all red. I mean, most areas are all red. So um, it's the, pro the protests are useless, you know. Trump got the most electorates and Trump has the most land area. So, um, you know, it's just a bit immature, not, not a bit, it's very immature and irresponsible just to just protest like that. Uh, and, of, and of course, there's uh, a lot of these protests, the protesters, they're very hysterical. They're saying, oh, this is going to be so horrible for women, minorities, uh, LGBT people. And they're saying, oh, this is this presidency is going to unleash a reign of terror. Yeah, Tim, and you made a video about that, right? You made a video about that. Yes. Um, let's hope people let's hope people watch that because no one has anything to be worried about. Women, especially women and um, the LGBT people, nothing to worry about. Trump was holding an LGBT flag on November the 1st in one of his rallies. So come on. He, one of the main reasons he actually um, sort of um, escalated his anti-Muslim rhetoric was because of the Orlando attack. Because of, the, because of the attack in the gay nightclub, he actually sort of um, increased his um, strong stance on Islamic refugees. Um, so he's doing everything to actually protect LGBT people. I mean, in a sense. So the LGBT people have nothing to worry about. Um, and he said already he won't. Well, he he's not thinking about overturning the marriage, um, same-sex marriage um, decision well, by the well, Supreme deep Court. Down, he doesn't have a problem with this. He doesn't. He doesn't. Ha he deep down, he doesn't have a problem with it. I mean, Trump right now isn't exactly a very religious candidate, is he? Oh, well, um, he's... I, I suspect that he's probably an atheist. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, he wants to preserve. He, he does want to preserve the culture and heritage. Yes, that's true. Um, and he wants to make sure that religion is there. But personally, he's not exactly very religious. Um, mainly an atheist, probably. So, you know, he's not exactly um, focused on overturning some same-sex marriage um, decision. You know, he's, he has more important things to focus on. He said that in the interview. And women, come on. He uh, he actually allowed the first woman. Well, he actually allowed a woman to build the first, the first woman to build a skyscraper in the United States, um, for example. So women uh, have nothing to worry yeah, about. It's not going to be illegal for your pussy to be grabbed on the street. He, that's true. None of that, none of that is going to be legal. Um, he knows it's not legal. He didn't do any of that. He just said it. Um, he and he said they allow, like they let you. So he said that they actually allow you. So he, like he was. Um, he was expecting women to allow him, so he, he knows that um, consent is essential. So just don't worry, nothing is going to happen. Like, it's mass hysteria. I just don't know why you would think this. Um, yeah, I just can't understand. Uh, and we saw reports that, that there was that report that came out that apparently eight tr uh, trans teenagers had committed suicide. Yeah. But luckily that uh, report was uh, uh, debunked. But it's, yeah. it's really like terrible that the left is whipping uh, f uh, various uh, groups into a frenzy, thinking that you know, oh no, you know, I'm going to be put into a camp or 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 shipped out of the country. Like it, it's it's just ridiculous, and they should be they should be really ashamed for you know ma ma making people stressed like that. Uh, they should be they, they should be laughing at themselves. I mean, if they saw themselves right now, it, it's just hilarious. It, it, really because um I mean, when it comes to things like conversion therapy um they're using the argument how the vice president supports conversion therapy oh once he did about once uh, he did yes i mean ago. yeah yeah i mean even if he did support it now it doesn't mean he's going to make it um something mandatory he's not going to make people do it even if he supports it it just means that he thought he used to think that conversion therapy works to convert gay people, and that's what he thinks. It's not like he wants to sort of force you to actually do it, because he doesn't, um, and, he, and he didn't back then. And he's the vice president, remember, so yeah. he doesn't have that much of an impact. And of course, yeah. that, uh, all yeah. those people worried about uh, Mike Pence, you, you better make sure nothing happens to Trump. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I saw I saw a good video by Shu on Head, um, and you know she's t she's saying how people want to assassinate Trump, but you know um, he's done nothing. He's done nothing wrong. Um, so just you know, just calm down. Just calm down. It's gonna be okay. You should be happy with the results. You should be overjoyed by the fact that Trump won because if Hillary won, there probably won't be an America left. I mean, there probably won't be streets for you to um, actually protest in because they probably will be nuked and you will be in some sort of underground bunker. Yes, the war with Russia has been averted. Yeah, exactly. The war with Russia has been averted. Um, and right after Trump won, there have actually been lots of diplomatic um, milestones achieved. So Russia said, Russia publicly said, we are looking forward to restoring our relations with the with America. Um, Bashar al-Assad said, you know, we want to work together and do something about this. So there's actually lots of cooperation now because Trump won. Because the world, believe it or not, believe it or not, the world actually wanted Trump to win. Many people around the world wanted Trump to win. Um, and many people are actually prepared to cooperate with the United States because Trump won. Because Hillary, come on, she's a, neo -con a neoconservative. She wants to, um, she has that neo-imperial American uh, mindset. So people hate her, but Trump won. He's a good person. He's not neocon, so therefore people can cooperate. Yeah, and of course there there was uh, it, there was the uh, scaremongering if if Trump was going to win, the stock market was going to, going to crash. <laughs> We saw yeah. we saw a dip uh, in the aftermath of his election, but now it's gone actually back up now. It's it's actually it's it shot up um, around the world. In fact, um, in America it shot up. In Australia it didn't even go down by much, um, but it went down a bit. But then it shot up again in Australia. Um, so you know the fear mongering, it's inaccurate. I mean the same thing with Brexit. Yeah. Same thing with Brexit. I mean, we saw people fear mongering. This will happen. That will happen. That will happen. But we, it was all debunked. Like it was the actual result was different. Um, and you know, we saw the protest, etc. So, 
it's very it's very similar, but yeah, I just uh, you know just stay put, calm down. <laughs> and of course, we we should focus on uh, the the aftermath of the campaign for Hillary and the Democrats, yeah. and it's clear that she thought that there was nothing wrong with her campaign, and she's blamed uh, the WikiLeaks email dump and also the the FBI director for uh, briefly reopening the in, the investigation. So it's it's not her fault; it's it's everyone else's. Yeah, um, I actually I'm quite surprised she would say that because I didn't expect her to say something like that. I didn't expect her to actually transfer the blame to somebody else completely, um, because we know that the, it wasn't just the FBI. I mean, if you look at it, the FBI investigation was nothing for us. I mean, we had we had other scandals. We had WikiLeaks. Um, that was a big contributor. FBI was nothing compared to WikiLeaks. I mean, that was just the FBI was investigating emails. WikiLeaks was about what what was actually in the emails, and people knew what was in the emails because of WikiLeaks. Um, her some of her campaigns, some of her policies. I mean, her policies also let her down. Um, no fly zone. Come on. Um, increased taxation. Yeah. Her and policies let her down. Yeah. And she wanted to put. As she said she wanted to put all the coal miners out of business. I mean. Yeah. Uh, tr- Trump said he wants to put them back to work, and uh, yeah. so surprise, surprise, Hillary didn't win the working class states. She, I, I know. I mean, Michigan. She didn't. She didn't win Michigan. Trump won Michigan. Um, so, you know, it's, she's blaming the FBI, but it was her policy. She should be blaming her own self, her own policies, because that's ultimately that's what people were using to judge the candidates, the policies. Hillary's policies were bad, full stop. Trump's were good. Um, and, you know, there was the additional bonus of how Hillary was involved in all those scandals, and yeah. that resulted in her downfall. So, you know, she's just being very irresponsible right now. Um, I am, I, to be honest, I am surprised by that because I thought she would just accept it and move on, but now she's blaming the FBI. Um, oh, well, she has yeah. accepted the result, but she's just yeah. said it's it's not my fault. It was all these yeah. other yeah. damn people around me. I mean, uh, she she wasn't expecting to to lose. That she didn't even prepare a concession speech. She had she had to she conceded the next day. Yeah, so. yeah, she um she did she did she did that she, um yes yeah, that, that was um really bad. I mean, she didn't. They didn't even have an actual concession speech prepared because they didn't know he will win. Um, that was very bad form, I have to say. That was very bad form. But, you know, she she did accept it by just blaming someone else. Come on, you know, you're, you used to be a secretary of, of, of state. Um, you shouldn't be doing that. It's your fault. Your fault. <laughs> but it wasn't just her policies, as, as you yeah. suggest. It was also because she, she was viewed by the... American people is largely untrustworthy and yeah. and corrupt. I mean, that, that's yeah. what the mainstream media did their best to hide the WikiLeaks emails, but that showed how the, she'd rigged the, rigged the primaries against Bernie and also how, how, she'd, uh, how she was colluding with the, with the mainstream media. And yeah. uh, pe- people just saw that and thought, look, she is part of the problem. She's part of the establishment. You know, they, a, a lot of people, they might not have uh, liked Trump, but they thought he's a better alternative. Yeah, we had, um, in fact, you know, we had people who actually didn't support many of his policies. They didn't support many of his policies. But like the Islamic um, woman, the journalist, um, it was Azra Nomani. She's an Islamic journalist um, in America, and she said she voted for Trump. She came out. She came out of the closet. She came out of the closet, and she said, "You know, I'm Muslim. I'm a woman. I'm a person of color, and I voted for Trump because not because I mainly agree with his views, but because he first of all has a plan to tackle um, Islamic terrorism, and he's actually prepared to say the word Islamic." terrorism and also because of his anti-PC um, personality. So that's, that, that, so we, we had people coming out supporting him, um, people who didn't expect to support him. Um, so yeah, yeah. And, th- and there was, I think, 33% of Latinos voted for him. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, much for, for all, the, all the Latinos were coming out to vote against him. Uh, he won <laughs> uh, white women by f- 52%. So clearly the 
uh, the the woman card, as Hillary calls it, didn't work. Yeah, did not work. It didn't. I think it backfired. If anything, um, you know, because people were just like, "Are you serious?" You know, using that argument. Um, I think it backfired, and you know. I'm happy she used it. I, I'm actually happy she used it because um, it backfired. So, uh, um, but yeah, um, and with the Latinos, um, he, he actually had a bigger turnout than Mitt Romney, um, and people were surprised at that. But there's nothing to be surprised because, I mean, as a migrant, I know that people hate seeing illegal migrants coming from their own countries. Um, you know, we hate we hate it when illegal migrants from our own countries or refugees refugees from our own countries are coming to Australia, for example. And so we would actually vote for the person with the strongest border policy. That's why many um, migrants in Australia actually vote for the Liberal Party because we hate it because well we love their strong border stance and we hate it when people are coming in illegally. Um, so it's not from a migrant perspective. I, I completely understand why um, Latinos voted for Trump. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the Latinos in America, they don't want uh, millions more to come in and, and give yeah. uh, give uh, all Latinos a bad name. Yeah, exactly. That that's a, that's a very good reason. I mean, the main reason people actually want that strong border policy is to erase that bad name from their own country. Because um, when my illegal migrants from my country started coming here, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Um, and you know, my society is a bit collective. So because of that collective um, sort of facet, you know, we sort of get really embarrassed quickly. Um, so it was really embarrassing. And my parents were embarrassed, for example. And that's why many people actually vote for the party with the strongest border policy. Um, and that, that's one reason. And another reason is it's just unfair. I mean, we have legal migrants who came here using the proper process, but then illegals coming here quickly and they're getting all these benefits, $113 billion spent in America alone um, on these illegal migrants. But the legals came here properly, the hard way, but the, but the proper way. And, you know, why, why should they see illegals coming here and getting all those benefits? Yeah. And let's also remember that the new first lady uh, will be the first uh, migrant first lady. Um, yeah, she will be she, one of the first. Yep, and you know, uh, well, that's that's a good thing from a left. If, if you're if you're left, that's that's a good thing. You should be happy about it, shouldn't you? I mean, you shouldn't be. We are seeing things like rape, Melania. Yeah, the, the people the using that vile stuff, vile signs at the protests. Very disgusting signs about Melania. You know, rape Melania. We have people bringing up her passed as a nudist. She was a nudist. Um, or did nude, she, nude photo shoots. Yeah, she did. She, uh, yeah, she actually, it was, it was like a Playboy magazine. It was a sexually sort of soft core sexual mag magazine. And she did photos for that when she was younger, when before she met Donald. People are using that, you know, hey, you know, women shouldn't be objectified, right? But just kidding, you know, that we have the first lady here. Um, what a slut, you know, come on. Um, Ironic left, being ironic again, but yeah, you know, if if anything, you should be happy that the first, that this is a, an immigrant first lady. And we also uh, over the weekend saw Trump's first uh, interview since he became president. He gave yeah. it to uh, C uh, CBS's sixty Minutes program, and I have to say, he was very uh, diplomatic, polite. Uh, uh, he was very complimentary to many of his opponents, uh, such as Hillary and the Bush family. So it was definitely uh, a new tone. He was trying to be uh, much more presidential, uh, have have a much more. Uh, he, he spoke in a much more soothing voice. So he was he was very much trying to. I, I think I think trying to uh, sort of calm calm people down, saying you know I'm not going to you know. Uh, you know, you haven't elected uh, a, a lunatic as president. I thought, I thought he did. He did very well in it. Yeah, I think he did very well. Um, I think um, ultimately he has to show the country that he's a good, he's a good person, and he has to appeal to the lefties. Um, ultimately he has to appeal to those left-wing protesters and show them that he's about to sort of um, make sure that the country is 
united again. He wants to build unity, and he has to be more. He has to be more refined. And I like it. I I like um his new his new personality. But the thing is, I feel like sometimes he's going a bit too far because he was complimenting Hillary and you know saying, oh she did she's good. She did so much. Yeah, Donald, we get you wanna like build unity, but just don't go too far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Part, part of the reason you were elected is because of uh, you had you had no. Of uh, no, no tolerance for you know pe- uh, as he called them people who were who were stupid or you know just talk talking rubbish like yeah. you know he he told he told told it how, how he saw it I mean uh, you know I I've I still would like to uh, see see some of those those tweets come out at at three a.m. you know that, <laughs> that's why that's why uh, that's why he was elected to to be to be a bit outlandish. Exactly. I mean, I want to see, I want to see a more judicious approach to those to those tweets. But I, I still want to see some of those tweets coming in, and you know, many of them weren't even insults. I mean, New York Times said they were insults. New York Times made this whole compilation um, of his insulting tweets, but they weren't insults. They were just he was just saying it as it is, just saying it how it is. Um, and I want to see those tweets again. I think they will keep com- coming, um, but it's just it'll be a bit different i mean it won't be as frequent um but because he because he does have to build his image among the lefties ultimately um so yeah i mean he never really picked on like anyone who you know couldn't handle it i mean like his you know republican opponents i mean i'm sure they could handle uh, a few uh, silly nicknames i'm sure uh, yeah and Me- and megan kelly sh- uh, could handle uh, some of the insults that were d- directed yeah that way i mean uh you know there the, the, the are people who are uh you know adults who could handle it so yeah exactly they're adults. They should be able to handle criticism, especially the media. If you're in the media, you have to learn to handle not just criticism, but full on insults, because that's what the job is about. You know, you'll be insulted. It's the media. Um, so Megan Kelly, you know, just don't be offended um, because that's just very childish. And, you know, you're actually being a bit you're, you're letting down, down the right wing name sometimes by doing that, because, you know, she's right wing ultimately. Um, but yeah, and she, in the interview, he also said um, he was also asked about the protests, and he was asked. Um, it was the interviewer. Um, she asked him about the behavior of his own supporters. Alleged behavior. We should. Alleged say. Alleged behavior of his own supporters, and I found it, you know, I found it really interesting how she asked that because um, he, are his supporters looting? Are his supporters assaulting people? No, you know, they're not like that. I mean, they may be saying some sort of, they may be saying some politically incorrect quasi Well, well there's, there, there's all these reports of uh, yeah. alleged hate crimes happening. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, you're seeing on uh, some of the mainstream news that, oh, you know, there's all these, uh, you know, Latino kids are being called names in schools. There's all these signs appearing everywhere oh, they, these are all alleged things a, a lot of these hate crimes have have, have been de- uh, been debunked already they have been and the police actually came out and said you know this for example this muslim woman she said she was um experiencing all this stuff but they said you know that was a hoax it was they investigated it was a hoax um and think of all the others i mean those are just tweets yeah a tweet Anyone can write anything in yeah, those tweets. People, people can uh, put anything on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe, who knows, maybe most likely they're all Clinton supporters trying to sort of rally people against Trump um, by, sh- by saying that, you know, we have all these hate crimes. crimes. Yes, I understand there are some people who might be saying some bad stuff as a joke, mainly as a joke. Um, but, the, but the thing is, you know, they're not looting, they're not assaulting people. Um, we actually have videos of the Clinton supporters doing all that stuff, but here, here is the interviewer saying, you know, your your supporters are doing this, but you know, nothing, saying nothing negative about, about the Clinton supporters. Again, very interesting. Yeah. Have you seen any white supremacists on the streets of America? <laughs> I I want to see white supremacists. <laughs> I want. To, I, I actually want to see because it'll be really interesting to see them, you know, and it'll be hilarious. Because <laughs> apparently they're they're still going on that oh he was endorsed by the Klan. Well, not really. Uh, yeah, not yeah. Seriously, 
Um, do they not know that Hillary said so much good things about one of their clan members? I forgot his name. I forgot his name. But um, she said so much good things. When he died, she was just, you know, saying it was it was like a eul- it was like a eulogy. She was just saying, you know, how good he was, how thankful I am for everything he did to me. Like, and of course, the- she called black men super predators. She said that she um said yeah she said that she said that she um in her email she was also found that she said um they're no gooders or useless people or something like that low information um, I think it was yeah yeah I think it was something like that and you know come on uh, Clinton supporters really really you you ignore that or either ignore them or they. Just don't know. I mean, the, the media doesn't report on that stuff. So. And, uh, and of course, all the feminists, they're claiming that a bully's been elected president. <laughs> I mean, uh, this, this sends a message that uh, women like your your oppressor can uh, become president. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, we all know that Clinton... Uh, Hillary Clinton was no friend a uh, friend of women, considering the <laughs> fact that she uh, she bullied uh, her husband's sexual assault victims. She did that. She also accepted. She accepted countries. Uh, sorry, countries. She accepted money from countries that suppressed women, um, while pretending to be a feminist progressive. So you know, she she was an enemy of women. She was an enemy of women. Many knew that. I mean, we had um some people some women in interviews saying why would a woman vote for her you know women can do so much better she's a bad she's an evil woman um and she doesn't represent represent women so you know as i said you should be happy that hillary isn't there you should be happy that trump is there yeah and don't forget uh his campaign manager uh kellyanne Con- Conway. yeah she, she's the first woman to run a successful uh u.s presidential campaign she is exactly she's the first woman in the united states to do that and that just shows that trump is pro-women come on i mean obviously he's pro-women his tapes show that he is pro-women um so um so yeah um but we also had within the interview we also had um he, he was giving an insight about his about his policies um like the wall like obamacare um and we also had um the media sort of twisting everything um, with that. So he said that, um, well, the interviewer asked him, will you be willing to consider offense? And he said, well, in some places, yes, I can accept offense. He said, I can accept offense in some places. And obviously, I mean, the terrain sometimes demands that um, offense is more appropriate. I do, I do uh, hope that it's a wall all the way through. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. that's what he's campaigning on, but he's got to get the uh, the wall through through Congress, yeah. and uh, yeah. obviously the the Republicans there will know that that's what he was elected on. But they'll yeah. they'll uh, they might try to water it, water it down to some degree. They might, they might. Um, and I think by saying that he might accept offense is him trying to sort of lubricate the process um, because you know he's he sounds a bit less hardline um, by saying he'll accept a offense. He's, say, he's saying, you know, I'm ready to negotiate a bit, you know, I'm not uh, that stubborn, sort of, I'm re- ready to sort of work it out a bit. Um, I can accept some concessions. So I think he's trying to lubricate, lubricate that process of passing it down through Congress um, and through the Senate. Um, yeah. Well, well uh, there hasn't been an opportunity to bu- uh, budget and uh, uh, yeah. plan the wall uh, uh, architecturally. So there is, the, there is still still a lot to work out, but he's he's going to have to build it one way or another. That was the essential campaign <laughs> promise, and if and, and if if he doesn't, you know that that'll be the end of him. Yeah, I really want, I really hope he does because, you know, I just don't want to lose hope with Trump. You know, I love Trump. We love Trump. We just don't want to lose hope with Trump. Um, he has to build a wall. He said he said he will build a wall. Um, and I'm confident that he will. So. Yeah, <laughs> and and of course, there's uh, a, a lot of the media are saying like, oh, you know, will he really do all, all, yeah. all this stuff? I mean, uh, that's just them hoping that, oh, f- you know, I, ho- I hope he doesn't do too many things we don't like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, they just sort of 
putting it out there that you know um, it's 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 like it's like a disguised version of saying you know we hope he doesn't do it. Um, but and they're all saying. I saw a headline saying Trump will build a fence or some, something along those lines. And, you know, that has that had nothing to do with what he said. Nothing. He said he will accept a war. He said accept a fence in some places. But the headline says, you know, oh, oh look, Trump will build a fence, not a war. Come on. Yeah, and they're saying, oh, he uh, he might not repeal Obamacare. No, he's he, he's got to repeal it. I mean, <laughs> even if he yeah. doesn't introduce a bill to repeal it, Congress will repeal it, and he'll have to uh, decide, uh, decide whether, to, whether to sign it or not. Yeah, um, and the whole, this whole Obamacare thing that he might not repeal it came from the, um, the interview again. He said that he might keep some, um, some parts of it, so two parts. That means he'll keep about three pages out of a 1,000-page um, booklet. That, that's the policy. Um, and, you know, that doesn't mean, that doesn't, I can't believe I have to sort of spell it out. It doesn't mean that he's not repealing Obamacare. It means that he will keep some good parts. And that has nothing to do with, that, that has nothing to do with him not repealing it. Well, we should move back to Australia now uh, in the, yeah. in the, uh, and the reaction here uh, to Trump's, Trump's victory. Of course, our media has been just as predictable uh, as the as the U.S. media, with uh, uh, people on the ABC uh, losing losing their shit, thinking how the hell could <laughs> could, could could Trump win? And of course, uh, Malcolm Turnbull, uh, when Trump won, gave a press conference saying, uh, "You know, we should all remain calm. Uh, the uh, the U.S. is still going to be a strong ally." And of course, yeah. Bill Shorten. Uh, yeah. A, a, any speak to Parliament <laughs> said, "Ah, oh, but Trump has still said all these mean things, and you know we're still going to be critical of him." Of course, the Greens saying that uh, we should uh, distance ourselves from from the United States in the aftermath of Trump's win. Um, the Greens, I just, I just do not know what to say. They're practically saying we should stop being allies with America simply because Trump said some mean things. Um, you know, just because, okay. Just because you're butt hurt doesn't mean that we should um, remove away from all our relations, foreign relations, okay? Especially with America. America is our ally. We need, we need America. We need America right now. Um, so just, you know, just greens, just, just you know, just either, either be constructive or just like go somewhere else because you're a waste of space. You're a waste of those leather seats in the Senate. Okay, just, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's uh, the the reason that the the Greens are carrying on hysterically like this is is because they're seeing their world world crumble now. I mean, their their yeah. green socialist utopia is falling apart <laughs> because uh, the, the the people are rejecting it, and so now they're just they they're just going into full panic mode by saying, "Well, Trump's this, Trump's that. Oh, he's so awful. Oh, we've got." Yeah. To... If, if Dean, uh, Richard Dean Natale, the Greens leader, tried to have that motion passed by the Senate condemning yeah. Trump's, <laughs> Trump's victory, and of course, uh, that that's one of the things that the Greens love to do is pass these motions in Parliament, mm -hmm. uh, vir virtue signaling. Signaling. I mean, before the election, there was one. They put a motion forward. I think it was them in the New South Wales upper house condemning Trump. Which, yeah, which looks yeah. a bit silly now. It does. It does. Um, everything yeah. looks silly now. No one was expecting it. The Greens, especially the Greens, the Greens just look, you know, very hilarious because it just goes to show that the Greens are not in touch with the people. It it shows the Greens know nothing. The Greens know nothing. Um, they're just a bunch of you know hypocrites, really. Um, because the thing is. In in that bill, they actually said they actually said um, we want to call him a slug. Mm. They actually had, from leftist perspective, those are insults. Those are insults. I mean, but but it's it's okay because the Greens are doing it. So it's not an insult when when the Greens are doing it for some reason. Um, but yeah, no, they're a joke. They're a joke. Um, hopefully, they sort of <laughs> destroy themselves. Just I'm just gonna be um, explicit. Hopefully they destroy themselves soon, um, and I think they are. I think they sort of. I think the left is sort of coming to a very um, turbulent phase um, because of Trump's victory, um, which is a good thing. Well, I don't expect the Labour Party to to change anytime soon. I mean, yeah. 
uh, they're still pretty much captive to to the progressive left. Uh, uh, I mean that they won't support the the government's uh, lifetime ban for um, asylum seekers uh, who come by boat to Australia. Yeah, yeah, and that just shows that they are they are slowly losing touch with the people. Um, they lost touch when they started becoming very progressive. I mean, we had the the rural conservatives who still voted Labour, conservatives, but still voted Labour. Um, they lost them. They're losing them because of their progressive pro-gay marriage, all that, all that, um, all those stances. So, you know, hopefully they do <laughs> destroy themselves. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But the Labour is will stay. But the Greens, you know, I just want the Greens gone. Okay, staying on uh, domestic policy. Now we saw the people swap deal with the United States. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, we're going to send some of the asylum seekers on Nauru and Manus Island to to the United States, and in return, uh, they're they're uh, they're giving us some of some of theirs, who will be uh, Latino Catholics, which is not too bad. Um, but uh, but um, but the thing is, though, uh, that uh, the, uh, those uh, refugee uh, asylum seekers that we're giving them, you know, they they're not going to be the uh, the type of people that that Trump will want in America, so we don't know whether this deal yeah. will actually work, and whether uh, the people smugglers will will use uh, use this deal as propaganda, saying, "Oh, well, even if you don't get to Australia, you still get to go to the United States." Yeah, you know, you know what I think. I feel like um, no, I think I think they did this deal quickly because now they know Trump is president, so um, I feel like they just quickly did this deal to make sure that um, it's all done and dusted before Trump gets in the White House. Um, so, you know, it's, it is going to be a bit interesting. I mean, since they are Latinos, they would be Christian. So they have that, that thing about them, um, you know, better than Muslims. <laughs> so, mm. oops. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, I think the Obama administration, they'll probably want to uh, accept as many uh, Muslim yeah. asylum seekers as they can before before Trump, Trump gets, gets in. in, which is another yeah. key policy that he needs to uphold is his ban on immigration from Muslim countries. Yeah, he has to uphold that um, policy because that was, again, one of the one of the key policies he had that let him win. Um I don't know what Trump thinks about this yet, um, this deal yet, but it might be useless <laughs> because Trump might deport them. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I still think, I still think it'll be, it'll be a bit useless for Obama to do this because Trump might just end up actually sending, sending them away. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, well, the, the main, uh, the, the main priority it seems for the government is to make sure that there's no one left on Nauru and Manus yet uh, not let the the people smuggling trade uh, come back yeah. again because uh, we because yeah. we know that labor they haven't learned anything they'll still they'll still want to uh, just just let the let the they'll let the boats keep keep coming back in I mean there's a, a labor faction labor for refugees which still supports this open borders policy yeah more debts. They want to see more debts at sea. They want to see more expenditure of taxpayer money on on these people. Um, they want to make it harder for legal migrants to get in. They, they're going to make it unfair for legal migrants. Um, you know, very, very ironic because the left pretends to be for the people, but the thing is now their policies are all about um, serving a particular group of people um, and sort of leaving out everyone else. You know, they've sort of. Um, Drawn, drawn a curtain between the real issues um, by ignoring the real migrants, the legal migrants, and focusing on the illegal migrants. Um, and that's very, it's, it's ironic. It's very ironic to see. I, lo I loved how the Greens condemned this uh, people swap. They said it was <laughs> immoral to send uh, asylum seekers to Trump's America. <laughs> um, well, the Greens, if we if we use the Greens as a moral standpoint, then as human beings, I don't know where, we'll, where we'll, we will be. Because, you know, the Greens are focused, um, they're ignoring the people who already live here um, in favor of people who are coming in. Um, you know, 
is there anything more immoral than that? So, you know, just sit down, Greens, sit down. <laughs> Well, that concludes our uh, summary of uh, this week's events. So, uh, as you've as you've just seen, the the U.S. election is still uh, dominating the news cycle, and we'll probably keep discussing it in the in the next few episodes, won't we? We will, because we are we are we will see um, other things happen. We will see more Trump interviews. I think um, we will see more protests. You know, it, it, things will escalate. We will see. We are yet to see whether Obama will do something about these protests. So we will see about that. Uh, look, look for that um, event. Um, and if he, if he does do something, we will talk about it here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so please join us again for our Thursday show, which uh, we hope that we will be able to to bring to you with our with our next uh, special guest. So once again, thanks you, thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and uh, also check out our YouTube channel as well, where you can see video versions of the podcast. And we've also started producing our Unshackled Fasts uh, uh, short videos. So they, so they've been uploaded, haven't they, Sukath? They have, and we have seen some success with them. Um, Tim uploaded his um, sort of analysis on the on the protests and assured people um, it's going to be okay. I had um, my other videos. Um, yeah, watch them; they're good. <laughs> yeah, and of course we'll continue to be producing uh, news and opinion on the Unshackled.net. dot yeah. net. So make sure yeah. that you 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 check out that uh, on a on a regular basis. Uh, so goodbye for now, and we'll see, we'll see you uh, next episode. Thank you, and goodbye. Bye.